In this video, I'm going over the things that I wish I knew earlier before switching to Linux as a lifetime Windows user. So there's gonna be six main points that I'm gonna make in this video. The first being Linux is fundamentally different than Windows. The best example of this is when I first came on Linux, I was constantly going to the website of the software that I wanted and seeing if I could download a package from them to install it on Linux. It's such a simple thing, but every Linux distribution has a package manager built in. And that package manager is just as simple, hey, install XYZ package, and then it installs it. Simple, fast, secure, just so much better than how it's done on Windows, but it takes a little bit of retweaking your mindset to really grasp this idea. Another thing where it's fundamentally different is everything can be customized. You don't like the file explorer in your Linux install, no problem, change it. You don't like the way your desktop works, change it. You don't like your browser and all these other things, you just change it. Where in Windows, you're pretty much stuck with how those menus operate, how the system settings and everything appears, all these things are already baked into Windows and are very static, you can't change them. Well, pretty much everything in Linux is dynamic and you can change at will. So that brings us to point two, the distribution doesn't matter. Uh, the only thing a distribution is, is different package managers, different ways to installing those apps I mentioned in the first point. And it's a starting place of how your desktop environment operates. So sometimes you get like a KDE version of you know, Manjaro, it's an arch-based system and all these other things. Well, that just operates differently than let's say an Ubuntu or a Linux Mint. Those things just look different and feel different out of the box. However, I can make both function almost identical to each other. The only thing that's different is how you install packages and the out of box look and feel. So again, it kind of brings us back to point one. You can customize Linux however it is. It's just sometimes it's a little more effort that goes into that customization. So when I say Linux distributions don't matter, well, they really don't. It's just a matter of how much work do you want to put in to get it to where you fit as a user. As me as a user, it it just doesn't matter. I, I customize my Linux install. There's no distribution out there that I'm like, oh, I have to have this or that. I'm just like, hey, I, I understand it. But as someone new coming into the environment, I highly recommend like Linux Mint. It has more of that Windows look and feel out of the box so you won't be quite as lost. But just know it is the customization of Linux that makes it so powerful. And don't think that you're stuck on some specific distribution because every distribution has its limits and there's things about every distribution I like and dislike. So don't think that one distribution is king and you have to install that one and that's the best one because there's a distribution out there for everybody. Number three, there's a lot of misinformation about Linux in the community and just in general. One, it, it, in any old forms, there's a lot of bad how-to guides just because many of those steps have changed over the years and they're just badly explained. A lot of times I've noticed on many guides that I follow that experts or people that put together those guides just omit certain basic features because they figure everyone should know that if they're using Linux. So uh, just understand if you're looking at basic forms and other things like that that are outside of the mainstream, some of those guides, if they're two, three, or more years old, they're not gonna be very relevant anymore. Point four, there are some great communities in Linux. However, you can't just go post on any old form, otherwise you may be ridiculed. So I highly recommend getting on Reddit. There's some great subreddits out there, and I'm gonna put in the link description below that you can click on and check out. Uh, Linux for noobs, Linux questions, and then I also have my own Chris Titus Tech that you can check out and ask any question you want. It's a safe space, so to speak, to where if you're new, don't feel like, hey, I can't ask this question because it's too much of a noob question. Uh, because pretty much any of these subreddits, you can ask anything you want and you'll get a good answer. Point five, Linux has some unique personalities. And I mean this as a way of saying there's some experts out there that just feel like everyone should know everything about Linux when they first get to it. And that's kind of the feeling I got when I first came to Linux desktop. I was like, 
this is different, and this is a very vocal minor, minority, mind you, but uh, it's just something that kind of turns off a lot of newbie Linux users. And it's, uh, you know, you'll get trolled. You'll see this command up here. You'll also get some people that'll ridicule you because you don't understand how to pronunciate certain terms like GNOME, or instead of saying GNOME, or Debian, you say Debian, you say OpenSUSE instead of OpenSUSE. There's the, hey, I use Linux, therefore I'm better than you, and I know it. All these things kind of play into uh, that whole obscure or unique personalities of Linux. Y you get that every once in a while, but it's as more of the masses move to Linux, this is becoming less and less of a thing. Just know you still run into little pockets where I see this type of thing. But overall, uh, just be prepared for a little, little taste of that when you get into the Linux community as a whole. However, a lot of these people have moved on or have become drowned out by the masses and people that have come into Linux. I know I'm a vocal majority, I'd say, that ridicule these people just because there's no place for them. They're discouraging people from adopting Linux and just overall just bad personalities that, you know, I wish they just disappear from public life as far as Linux goes. And, and as a most part, they have become far less prevalent than they were five years ago. Like I did try and jump on Linux desktop five years ago and it's not nearly the place it was today. And they were just everywhere it seemed. Anytime I ask a question, there was always some kind of snarky response. But a lot of that has disappeared and we've seen so much of these communities pop up that supports new users. So that's why I kind of brought up in the prior point that don't worry about those users stick to these subreddits and also the main forums like Ubuntu's main forums, Linux Mint's forums. Those are some great forums where you pretty much can ask anything as well. And the last and probably the best point about Linux is everything is free and open. So on Windows, when I first came here, I was like, oh man, oh, this is cool. I got a bunch of freeware. And then immediately I almost got a response from about 10 people saying, this isn't freeware, it's free and open. It's called FOSS free and open software. What that means is on Windows, when someone gave something free, they basically give out a taste of their free software. And then once everyone got hooked to it, they'd switch to more of a commercialized product now charging for it because they never released the source code or the thing that made that product what it is. Well, on Linux, everything starts open source and free for the most part. And if someone tries to do that, well, they just say, okay, well, no problem. And someone forks that project and it just keeps being open and free. So as far as products coming into the space and charging a whole bunch of money, like you see in like Mac's ecosystem or Windows ecosystem, it just doesn't really happen that much in Linux because almost everything I do on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's video editing, photo editing, any of these things can be done on Linux using free and open software. And Everything else that I've wanted to do on Linux, the only thing I've really been paying for in the last five months of Linux desktop usage is games. There's certain games that I've been playing and most of them are actually Windows based games that I'm playing on Linux. So I guess you can't even knock them for that either. So this is probably the most empowering thing is being able to just say, hey, I wanna learn something, I wanna go do this. I don't have any of the software. Well, no problem, there's freeware equivalents or <laughs> I caught myself again. See, I still haven't broken myself of some of these habits. There's free and open software to do that specific thing, which is just incredible. You know, that's the greatest thing about Linux. And those were my six things I wish I knew before coming to Linux because it would have saved me some heartache, some issues as far as con common conceptions. I really didn't know what I was getting into. Even with these six things, there's about 20 different things probably I forgot to mention in this video. Let me know in the comments what I missed. And if you'd like to support videos like this one, consider visiting me on Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video.